everyone, it is Unagina here and welcome, welcome, welcome to this third episode of this Vampire Mecha Mansion speed build series. Um, since we're officially halfway through the series with this episode, uh, I thought I'd make this episode like a special. Um, so this is going to be a story episode where I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the background story for this mansion. Um, but before I do that, I also want to tell you the name of this mansion because I sort of just realized that I'd never actually told you what this mansion is going to be called. It is going to be called Fairblood Manor uh, and I thought I would tell you this because it is probably going to be part of the story that I'm going to tell you. So uh, otherwise you'll be like, what's she talking about? What's Fairblood Manor? <laughs> so anyways, it's called it's called Fairblood Manor. Um, so. Anyway, also before I get started, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what rooms I'm going to be decorating today. So I'm going to be um, furnishing the, the ballroom, as you can see actually right here. Um, so last time we furnished most of the lower floor, so it's pretty much just this that's left. Uh, I just did a small room before, but otherwise it's just a ballroom here. And then we're going to move upstairs and there we're going to be um, furnishing the great li library, the two-story library that I am so excited about. And then we're also going to be decorating the lounge, which is also a really cool room. And then we're going to be decorating a bedroom, really nice bedroom. And that's about it. I think there might be some smaller rooms around, but um, nothing uh, great apart from the rooms that I mentioned here. Uh, so those are some pretty cool rooms that I'm going to be decorating today, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy that. Um, again, I thought they were really cool and it's 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 just a really nice mansion. I just enjoyed myself so much building this. Um, but yeah, anyways guys, story time. So um, the story is going to be about fairies and vampires. Now as you probably know, um, fairies were a thing in The Sims 3 Supernatural. So we've had fairies in The Sims before. Um, and we also got like a small reference to fairies here in this The Sims 4 Vampires game pack. We got a fairy statue and I just thought that was kind of cool. And I actually used that fairy statue and when I did that, um, I was like, why would, why would vampires have a fairy statue, that doesn't make sense. And then I sort of made up a story as to why that was there. Um, and this story just started taking shape in my head. Uh, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty nice and it just sort of evolved into something pretty fun. I thought it was a pretty fun story and I thought why not share it with you guys. So uh, today is going to be a story special where I'm going to tell you the story behind this mansion. Um, so the fairies that I'm going to include in this story is going to be fairies in the very traditional sense, not so much the sort of good glittery fairies that a lot of people probably know. Um, but if you look at folklore um, and traditional literature and all of that, the fairies that you see there will be more of a sort of a spirit um, and a trickster um, in some sort of sense uh, where they'll be tricking humans into traps and whatever not. Um, so they're actually not particularly nice creatures and yeah so that's the kind of fairy that I'm going to be uh, including in my story. So without further ado I think we should get started on the story because I'm kind of excited for it. So once upon a time in The Sims 3 both fairies and vampires lived, but they were great, great enemies and both species had something that the other wanted. The fairies had magical blood and if the vampires drank it, they would become very, very powerful. The vampires, however, also had something that the fairies craved. They did not have any special magical abilities, that's true, but they did have immortality. So that was definitely something that the fairies was inter were interested in. 
The fairies worked and worked on finding a way to absorb the power of immortality from the vampires, but none succeeded. However, one day, the fairies did find a way to perform a magical spell that would rip the vampires of its immortality and leave them vulnerable to attack. The fairy would not absorb this immortality, but the spell was effective as a weapon against the vampires, who hunted them for their magical blood. The fairies... Sorry, the fairies began to seek out the vampires and take their immortality away so that they would no longer pose a threat to them. They would disguise themselves as vampires and have the vampires invite them into their homes. And when the vampires least expected them, the fairy would cast a spell that would take away their immortality. Now, you may have noticed, actually, that I've been putting quite a lot of mirrors around this house. Now, the reason for this is because... The mirror served as a security measure for the vampires residing here. You see, the vampires do not have reflections, but while the fairies could disguise themselves as vampires to trick them into a false self sense of comfort, the fairies could not get rid of their own reflection. The vampires knew this, and therefore they put up mirrors everywhere so that they did not get unwanted guests. So if a fairy entered the house, they would be able to see if they were actually a vampire, even if they were disguised as one. They would be able to see their reflection and reveal their true identity. The war between the species went on for centuries until one day something changed. A very, very powerful fairy managed to do something that no other being, fairy or not, had ever achieved before. This fairy found a spell that would not only rip a vampire of its immortality, but it would also absorb it. The price for this spell was terrible, however, quite irrelevant to this story, and the fairy quickly became corrupted by the immortality. She refused to reveal to her fellow fairies how she managed to gain immortality. Thus she remained the only immortal fairy in the world. Because of her mortal nature, however, the other fairies started to refer to her as the mother fairy. The vampires, on the other hand, felt the need to go on the offense, and a mortal fairy meant great trouble for them. The fairy still had the ability to take away their immortality and effectively kill them, but they could not kill her in return, because she had gained immortality. Not knowing what to do with the mother fairy, the vampires sought out witches, long known for their very powerful magic. They wished to find a spell that would get rid of the fairy. The witches were not really quick to say yes to the vampire's plea of help, as they saw them as an abomination of nature. However, because the fairies too, and especially uh, the immortal one, was, an, was uh, very worrisome for the, for the witches, because they too had magical abilities, and they were luring humans into traps, and they were doing all sorts of things. The witches did not like them either, so they agreed to help the vampires with their fairy per problem. The witches told them that it would not be possible to find a way to kill the fairy, or take away its immortality, but they do know, or they did know of a way that they could help the vampires to trap her. The vampires would have to draw a large symbol on the ground that they would have to lure the fairy to. Once the fairy was within the borders of that symbol, she would be trapped and unable to move. They would then have to perform a spell that would petrify the fairy. Uh, not the fairy. What am I saying? The fairy. Um... The vampires did as they were told, and after much planning, they managed to set up a trap for the fairy, and that would lure her to the symbol um, that the vampires had then drawn on the great balcony of the Fairblood Manor. Now, that balcony is the one that I've been talking to you about a few times, with the sort of ruins look to it, so that is the balcony where they put down the symbol. The trap worked, and the mother fairy found herself trapped on a balcony, only to see a clan of hooded figures mumbling and chanting as the flames of the candles surrounding the symbol flickered furiously. These were the last thing that the fairy saw, and from that day she was petrified and trapped in the mansion, belonging to one of the most powerful vampires in the world. The vampires were not quite done with their deed, however. They knew that the other fairies would come looking for the mother fairy, 
While the vampires had always had an interest in keeping fairies alive because their blood was such a great use to them, they decided that they had to kill all the fa fairies. They did not want to risk any of them to find their and free their leader. As the legend goes, the vampires managed to find a way to kill all the remaining fairies in the world, only leaving the one immortal mother fairy trapped on the balcony of the fair blood mother. However, whispers have been heard in the world of The Sims 4 that not all fairies are dead. Some are still alive, even though they're in hiding, and they are plotting against the vampires, and they are planning to free the mother fairy from her vampire prison. If the, vampire, if the whispers are true, perhaps we will once again see, see fairies in the world of The Sims 4. But it is not anything else but a rumor. Perhaps all fairies are indeed gone. We don't know. So that is my little background story for Fair Blood Manor. And I don't know, I thought it explained a little bit the absence of fairies in The Sims 4 since we had them in The Sims 3. I thought it was a really cool idea to just sort of explain why do we not have fairies now that we have vampires. Um, and it would certainly make like way for a comeback for the for the fairies. Um, so if we ever do get a supernatural expansion pack, which I don't know, we probably will. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we will. Um, but if we do, and we get fairies again, I can just see a really awesome story taking place where the fairies will come and they will free the mother fairy and. A great war will be going on between the vampires and the fairies again. That'll be really cool. I thought that was really nice. So anyways, that was my little background story. And um, as you can see, the mother fairy is trapped on this balcony that there is in this house. I showed you that just a little moment ago. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's also what... Um, if you remember the ritual room that you can see in the introduction for this series, you can see like a room uh, with a lot of hooded figures standing around sort of a ritualistic circle. I was thinking that that would be um, sort of where they would still perform some rituals. Maybe the vampires sort of got a little more into magic um, after they trapped the fairy. I don't know, um, but that's sort of where I was going with that. So anyways, back to the actual build. I'm just decorating the library a little bit and perhaps you might have noted and uh, or noticed that I already did decorate a little bit of this uh, library before um, the recording started and actually that was not on purpose. I do not know what actually happened. Um, I also lost the recording of the the little shrine that was supposed to be inside the ballroom. I did decorate, I think, the entire ballroom on camera, but there was also like a little shrine in there. And um, I don't know, the recording is not there. I think what happened is that I thought I started recording after taking a small break. Um, and apparently I didn't start recording. So um, I lost, I lost some time where I was decorating the shrine and also uh, the beginning of the library. I think most of what I did in the library, I just put in some flooring and some wallpaper and then I just sort of layered all of these bookshelves everywhere. Um, and then I managed to sort of um, realize that I had forgot to push record. So I am just, uh, I don't know, I still have some recording for, from the library. So that's good enough. Um, I'm really, I'm so in love with this library. I think it is really, really awesome. I would love to have this place and I'm loving um, these very, very old books. The sort of, I don't know if they look like diaries or just very ancient books with little locks on them. That's the kind of books that I imagine you would probably have in a, in a mansion like this uh, because it's so old. Um, and I really like putting the bookshelves on top of each other to create this sort of very tall book bookshelf. Um, so yeah, this is, this is my favorite room, I think, of the entire build. I just love it so much. And I would love to have a room like this myself, perhaps a little less creepy. Uh, but, <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah, I would definitely love that. And just look at that two-story library. I mean, that is just a dream. That is just a dream. Um, so I thought I wanted to say something about the ballroom, but maybe not. Um, anyways, um, so I'm just doing a little bit of decoration inside the library. Um, as always, I'm just fiddling around so much with so many things. Um, so it's really just taking me so much time. So maybe it's not such a bad thing that I lost some recording of the library and uh, of that shrine, because otherwise I think we would have been here for a little while longer. And either way, I think you are still getting quite a bit of the decoration of the library, the most important part at least, <clears throat> you're still getting. And I can really feel my voice getting very hoarse, so I'm so sorry, I think it's my medicine that I'm taking that's making me, uh, making my voice really bad. <clears throat> there isn't really anything I can do about it, so I hope that is okay for you guys to listen to. So um, after this one, I think we're moving on entirely just to the to the lounge room and that one is really cool it's a it's a very dark room and when I say dark I don't mean it's not lit up I mean <laughs> there's a bit of a very dark story behind that too um, so we'll get to that at that point in time and I'm really loving using all these um, spooky stuff curtains as well in this in this build because I think I like this sort of ripped curtain thing going on um, and of course I also love the curtains that came with the vampire pack but I also like these ripped curtains, they kind of give it this very old look and uh, I think that's pretty cool. And I am just keeping on going with so many candles, trying to place so many things and I think I delete all of it again. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is the story of my life with this build. <clears throat> I am just fiddling around so much all the time. Um, but I think this room is pretty much done. Yeah, okay, I'm just decorating the hallway and then I realized that I was like, oh, I've already finished the lower floor. I've already moved on to the ritual room and the theater and all that. And I was like, oh, wait, I haven't done the lower floor. Never mind. <laughs> so I am going to be moving one level down after I'm just, uh, after I've just put in some wallpaper and a couple of decorative items into this hallway that I'm going to move downstairs and we're going to start with the um, lounge. No, yes, the lounge. As you can actually see right here, you just got a little glimpse of it. Um, you could see the uh, the great the great office next to the uh, the library. It's sort of in the little bit of a rounded room. It is a really very very but uh, excuse me. <laughs> it's a very cool room. I'm really liking that one as well. Um, and I kind of like this purple plant. And I'm putting this there for now, but I'm going to move it because I didn't really like the combination of red and purple. So that one is going to go at some point, but not in this episode, I think. Because I realized that I had to decorate all of this stuff first. And this uh, balcony kind of thing overlooking the Grand Hall, I kind of got the idea actually from, from the Sims team themselves. Um, because I think, is it... Is it Vlad's Manor that also has something similar with the balcony overlooking some sort of space uh, place? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it was in the trailer. Just I don't, I'm not sure. But anyways, I got the I got the idea from them because I thought that was pretty cool. I would sort of imagine if there is like a vampire tournament going on down there. Some vampires are sparring, or they're making humans fight each other, or something cruel like that they would be sitting up here and you know clapping their small cold hands at <laughs> at the people down there uh, so I thought that was pretty cool and I just love this llama so much this vampire llama it's <laughs> it's so silly it's so silly and I tried placing it a few places outside and I was like it's kind of almost too silly for this build because it's such a dark build but I just couldn't help myself I had to have the llama I mean the llama's the llama is too good not to have, so I decided to put it. Oh, and here you can say I'm actually putting down that ritual uh, simple thing that is trapping the mother's uh, the mother fairy. So that's where I'm placing that one. So, anyways, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm loving this little 
room. Actually, I think it's pretty cool. And I love, and I know that it's sort of obvious to go for the whole black and red look for the vampires. It just seems like the most obvious choice, but I also think it's so pretty. So pretty. I really like black and red together. It's such a nice color combination. So I'm going for that. I am trying to go for some other color combinations in some of the other rooms of the house. Um, I am going for the black and purple theme as well, which I also think is very pretty. And then of course in the dining room, as you saw, I went for a little bit of a green theme, uh, which was also pretty cool. And I realized here that I had not put spider webs in this in this library and that was a crime against nature so I had to have spider webs everywhere because I think I think this is a place that would probably collect a lot of dust and a lot of spiders um so yeah my only problem with these bookshelves uh, that I'm currently putting spider webs in um is that they're not filled with books there are so many empty spaces on them and I tried putting in a few of the book decoration items and some lights and all of that into the shelves but I don't know they I wish they had books everywhere in that in that uh, in that bookshelf because I really like the other bookshelves that I've used um, the books that are in them also sort of fit uh, the whole build better um, because they look like ancient tomes and all that sort of thing um, so I think those bookshelves are pretty cool. I think the reason I didn't use them everywhere like I did with uh, the ones that I said I didn't like as much is because um, the ones that are a little bit empty, they sort of reach all the way to the ceiling um, if you place them on top of each other. And they also take up two full uh, squares on the floor. I think the other the other bookshelves with the ancient tomes in them, they sort of take up a little less space than the two tiles they're at. So you would have to try to place them a little more um, carefully close to each other. And I'm not sure you would be able to make it look like one big bookshelf the way you can with uh, those emptier looking ones. So I just had to go with those ones. And then I put the ancient tome bookshelves in some of the other places. So this bedroom, I don't know who it should actually belong to. I mean, I think most of the vampires would probably be underground. So I don't know if it's more of an appearance kind of room or perhaps this this is the bedroom of um, the, or I don't know, the vampire lady who lives here. Perhaps this was her room when she was a human or something, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. I think most of them would probably live um, in the basement or in the tombs that I've made for them. So, I don't know. But if you're, if you're using this house, of course, you can just have vampires stay in, in this room um, if you don't mind having them above ground. And I was struggling so much with this um, fireplace, actually. Um, I think I said... In the last episode, I was talking about how I did not like the three swatches that came with the counters. I have a little bit of a tr problem with the with the swatches for the what's it called the fireplace for the from the vampire pack as well, um, mainly because it doesn't go it doesn't come in a in a full on dark um, color. It comes in a white with a black sort of. Um, table top or whatever top part um and I don't know it didn't fit into a room like this I kind of felt like this room needed something very dark uh so that fireplace just wouldn't really go um so I wish we have we would have had like an entirely black swatch that would be that would be very nice um but these two pictures I just placed on the wall here they, I am thinking that they, that'll probably be like a picture of the vampire um, who lives here um, or the, the, the woman who used to have this room for herself. So that's, that was what, where I was going with those pictures, perhaps. That's just sort of a little, a little uh, thought while decorating. I have many of those. And... Uh, Something weird happened with the pillars in this room. All of a sudden, you'll probably see me correcting it in just a moment. All of a sudden, uh, the pillars on the inside of the room had all of a sudden gone 
to the outside of the build. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to you. You'll probably you'll see it in a moment when I'm correcting it. I think I'll be doing that just in a in a minute probably. Um, so oh, and I really love these carpets. I think they're so nice, and they're actually really good when you size them up. I think you can size them up quite a bit, and they still look pretty good. And I love when you have items that sort of still look good when you size them up, because some of the items in the game sort of don't look very good when you size them up. So oh, and here is where I'm putting in the pillars again, because I don't know. All of a sudden they were they were on the exterior of the build instead of the uh, instead of the inside. I don't know why and what happened. Um, it just sort of happened at some point. I don't know why. If any of you guys know that I did something in particular that that sort of did this, um, tell me because I would like to know what did that so that I don't have this happen to me all the time. It's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, anyways, those those carpets are really cool, uh, or the, the rugs are really cool, because not everything looks very good when you size it up. Also, not every um, all of the the rugs look very good when you size them up. But this one, you can I've sized it up a lot in the in the office, the great office of this build. Um, so it's it's. Uh, it looks very good when you do that. So this balcony, actually, I had a little idea with as well. I put just one chair out there. So my thought with this was that um, um, it would be like a place where if if they had uh, the people or the vampires living in this house had like a, an enemy, a vampire enemy, they would put them out on this balcony and strap them to the chair um and they would make uh, they would wait for morning to come and you know that would pretty much be the end of that vampire so that was my <laughs> thought my very dark thought um of that of that balcony so yes so now we've moved on to this um lounge room and as you can see i've already put in a few items as i also told you last time i did that in the beginning just to make sure i remembered my ideas for the rooms and this, uh, these cages that I've put up, I've used these, these are from, um, what's it called, the get to work, where you have prison cells and all of that, so if you just use the bb.showhiddenobjects cheat, then you will be able to see this, um, but yeah, these are, like, prison pieces that I've put, and I'm thinking that these two cages will be, like, a place where the vampires will uh, catch a human and they won't feel like you know drinking right away so they'll you know like cats like to play with their food uh, that is exactly what I'm thinking the vampires will be doing as well so they'll be catching a human and they'll be putting them in there and you know they'll be having a good time inside this room lounging in this room and then they'll just sort of go to the cage and have a drink occasionally when they feel like it um, so as I was saying, this build is pretty dark. Uh, I hope you're not um, sort of queasy person because <laughs> because yeah, it it is a little dark. So that was where I was going with that one. I think this uh, this this room is pretty awesome as well. I really really like it. It feels very grand, and I can just sort of imagine all the vampires lounging in here and just relaxing and playing around and having a little bit of a drink. I also put a couple of bars in there because I'm thinking the only other things that I believe that vampires are probably going to consume other than, you know, human plasma, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, is going to be alcohol. So I put a, a couple of bars in there because I'm thinking they'll probably want that. So yes. And I went with another red and black theme, as you can see. That is going to be like the most uh, reoccurring theme that I have in the house. But yeah, I am trying to put another a uh, few other colors in here and there. But black and white is the main thing. So I also use quite a lot of the show hidden objects um objects <laughs> in this in this build um like little wine glasses or 
little drinks classes or little books or something that comes from this. Yeah, like you can see here, like little wine glasses and all of that. I think that sort of makes the build feel very uh, alive and I kind of like that. I like to see that something is happening in the house. So, yeah. So what do you guys think about that little story that I made? I didn't even ask you. <laughs> Did you think it was fun? Is it something you would like me to do? Like in the future when I make builds, if I sort of make up little stories about it? Um, is that something you would like to see? Because I don't know, I kind of think it's very interesting when you have a house to also have a background story for it. It sort of makes the house feel a lot more... Um, interesting and alive and like it's actually a, a real proper house I just I think I really like that so I would love to do that um, in the future and then sort of just have little stories about what happened in the build in the past and all that especially if it's old builds perhaps probably not if it's um, a modern build I don't know, the only thing you could do there perhaps is tell a little bit of a story about the family that I imagine to be living there. But otherwise, um, old builds are probably the ones that make most sense. Um, but yeah, if you guys would like me to to do that kind of thing in the future, um, I would definitely do that. I think that's a lot of fun. So just comment down below if that's something that you would like. Um, and if you wouldn't like it in the future, also fr feel free to comment that in the in the comment section below. Just tell me you you know your your story was really shit. <laughs> so please don't do that again. Um, I would prefer that. Thank you. Uh, you can say that. That's fine. I won't mind. Um, so I'll just have a look at what people are saying and then I'll decide what to do in the future. So here I'm just doing a little bit of a bathroom. We don't have many bathrooms in this build because, uh, well, vampires don't really use bathrooms. So I didn't really think it was necessary, but I really kind of liked this one. And I'm also thinking that even though, that, uh, even though they don't go to the toilet, I think they would enjoy a bath once in a while just because it's kind of luxurious. Um, and so I went with that, this sort of nice turret um, room. I just thought it would be really cool to have a bathtub in there with lots of candles everywhere. And that would be a pretty nice place to be just relaxing a little bit. Um, so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And I really love using all the candles, <laughs> as you can see. Um, so yeah. Uh, I also put in mirrors here, and as I was telling you in the story, I mean, I know I, I'm saying that the mirrors are primarily there to reveal a potential intruder, fairy intruders, but I'm also thinking that the vampires use the, the mirrors to sort of, um, I don't know, check in on themselves, make sure <laughs> they're feeling all right. Oh, okay, I'm still a vampire. Don't worry, nothing to worry about. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe some of them are feeling like sad that they can't see themselves anymore. Or uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just really liked using these um, mirrors all over the house. Um, some of them are for security measures. Some of them are for the vampires themselves, just because they sort of like to do that. I'm also, um, if you remember in the start of this I also made like a little room below this and that one also had a lot of mirrors in it there was just one coffin I just imagined that the vampires would lock uh, a vampire into that room with all the mirrors and they would be like look at yourself you're a vampire if if this vampire was like I don't want to eat human blood oh no uh, I only want to drink plasma fruit or something like that they would be like locking them into that room and say please remember you're a vampire <laughs> and look at yourself in the mirror you cannot you don't have a reflection so just act like a vampire <laughs> but anyways guys that is the end of this episode for today please let me know what you thought did you enjoy the story uh did you like the build are you excited for the next episode i definitely am so um until then 
If you liked this video, uh, please remember to give it a little bit of a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, so anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day and see you soon.